All right, everyone. Good Thursday morning. The time is just about 10 10 central time. I'm meteorologist Alexa Trishler with WWL TV or WWL Louisiana, New Orleans. We're here to bring you the latest on Hurricane Helene, which is still a category two hurricane expected to strengthen to a category three major hurricane before it makes landfall in the big bend of Florida this evening. So further strengthening is expected like we've all been talking about. It's just going to be a catastrophic storm for the Florida Big Bend and the west coast of Florida, that Big Bend region particularly, but those impacts will be spreading inland across Georgia and into the Carolinas and to the southern Appalachians going into tomorrow into your Friday. So we'll take a look at the latest on Hurricane Helene at category two strength winds sustained at 105 miles per hour gusts at 125 miles per hour. This is from the latest update from the National Hurricane Center. The 10 AM update. It is now moving north northeast at 14 miles per hour. It's expected to intensify today to a major category three, possibly close to a category four strength before it makes landfall. It'll continue on this northeasterly motion and it looks like it will be accelerating as we go into today. So not much uh, time left to make those final preparations. So if you live along the Florida Big Bend, now is the time to rush those final preps to completion because the storm will be making landfall later today during the evening hours by maybe seven o'clock or so this evening. Still as a category three, 120 mile per hour major hurricane at the time of landfall. So since it will be moving by so quickly and it's so large in size, I mean, it will be remarkably big. These impacts will be spreading along the west coast of Florida, down through Tampa Bay, along the Big Bend, and then into Georgia. Like I mentioned, as it rushes into Georgia, those impacts continue to spread inland with heavy rain and gusty winds continuing to push into Georgia on Friday. And then it will finally dissipate in the Tennessee Valley this weekend. As it gets sucked up by an upper level low pressure system, you probably heard this, as this upper low kind of winds out and sucks in Helene, it's known as the Fujiwara effect where there's two storms nearby one another and usually the stronger one, you know, intakes um, the, the smaller one. And that's kind of what we will see going into this weekend. So that is the reason why the New Orleans area, Southeast Louisiana and South Mississippi don't have to worry about this storm. I mean, it's a shame that anyone has to deal with this, but we're in the clear here in our area because of this upper level low that's kind of yanking Helene right around it as you can see there and it gets absorbed by that upper low heading into the weekend and that's kind of the reason why there will be sustained rainfall uh, threat for the Tennessee Valley and the Southern Appalachians tomorrow into early Saturday and then that upper low pushes off to the east going into early next week. So like we've been showing you almost the entire state of Florida under some warning, either a tropical storm warning or a hurricane warning, which is unbelievable to see a hurricane watches for the Tampa Bay region, hurricane warning for the Big Bend of Florida and into South Georgia, even parts of extreme uh, southeastern Alabama, Dothan, including in that hurricane warning. So almost the whole state of Florida and the whole state of Georgia, the entire state of Georgia under a tropical storm warning or a hurricane warning, the hurricane warning in red stretches up through central Georgia. And again, the eastern part of Alabama included in that. South Carolina also in completely covered by a tropical storm warning and parts of the mountainous regions of North Carolina. So the threat of uh, the impacts will be spreading inland, not just felt right at the coast. The impacts will be spreading across a large portion of the southeast tomorrow into early Saturday. I wanted to take a look again on tropical satellite. So from the National Hurricane Center, the latest uh, kind of observations, the eye wall has completely become closed off. So the strengthening is going to continue. There's nothing that's going to get into the way of this. The upper atmosphere is conducive for strengthening. Of course, the Gulf is extremely hot, so it's it's um, it's go time, unfortunately, for this thing to get uh, really powered up over the next several hours before it makes landfall. And now those red boxes that you're seeing pop up on uh, the peninsula and across uh, parts of the Big Bend and even into Georgia and the Carolina or South Carolina. That's a tornado watch because as the system moves on shore, there can be those quick spin up tropical tornadoes. So tornado watches in effect for a good almost all of Florida, uh, half, most of South Georgia, all of South Georgia, that recent run there coming in. South Georgia included in the tornado watches, also the eastern side of Georgia and a good portion of South Carolina under a tornado watch because of this incoming Helene. So there is that severe weather risk associated with this, particularly along the coast of Georgia and the coast of South Carolina. That's where the highest risk 
the highest risk for uh, tropical tornadoes. So that tornado risk is there. It's there across Florida, but it's kind of elevated, I would say, off the coast of Georgia and South Carolina going into today and through early tomorrow. So this is what we have really catastrophic storm surge is expected for the Big Bend of Florida. Anywhere from 15 to 20 feet of storm surge is possible with Helene along the Big Bend. That includes Wakulla County, Florida, Taylor County, Florida, down to Cedar Key, and they've just been getting hit. You know, last year they had uh, Idalia come through. They had Debbie a few weeks ago. And Tallahassee's right in the kind of right in the landfall spot so far. So Tallahassee also dealt with the tornadoes a few months ago. So they're really, unfortunately, not getting a break when it comes to severe uh, bad weather, and they're going to be dealing with the cleanup with this for quite some time. So storm surge potential with this is going to be. Uh, unfortunate 15 to 20 feet possible for the Big Bend of Florida and then even for Tampa Bay still looking at five to eight feet of surge and then three to five feet of surge possible from Fort Myers down to Key West as the system continues to move along the eastern Gulf of Mexico today and then making landfall tonight in the Big Bend of Florida somewhere just south of Tallahassee right in that region very marshy region but there's still you know homes right along the coast there a lot of them are elevated and raised but still it's it's going to be a, a, an unfortunate situation. 15 to 20 feet of surge is, is kind of unbelievable with this system. Again, that wind impact, of course, going to be the worst, felt the worst right along the Big Bend of Florida in the Tallahassee region and into South Georgia, the Thomasville region of uh, South Georgia. That's where 110 plus mile per hour winds are possible. The uh, strong hurricane winds are possible, but even extending farther northward along I-75 in South Georgia all the way up to Macon, 75 to 110 mile per hour winds possible. And then even close just to south of Atlanta, so the suburbs of Atlanta may be experiencing 60 to 75 mile per hour winds with this as Helene makes landfall tonight and then darts inland pretty quickly. So late tonight through tomorrow, those impacts spread farther inland across South Georgia. Now the rain impact is also going to be something that's going to be felt even farther to the north. So the heaviest of the rain going to be happening right along that landfall location along the Big Bend of Florida and then again across South Georgia. But you notice Asheville, North Carolina, so the Tennessee Valley, the Southern Appalachians, that region, that is where since the, the the terrain is elevated, you may have to deal with, you know, mudslides, landslides and just uh, extreme torrential rain from this. So those impacts are just going to be felt across many states as Helene moves uh, inland and farther northward through tomorrow. So extreme rain expected for parts of the southern Appalachians. Even North Georgia will be seeing quite a bit of flooding potential with this. So I know for for football for the Saints game a lot of people from New Orleans may be traveling to Atlanta they probably will be dealing with some power outages but the game is not until Sunday so I think we may be good there might be some delays with the airport you know things of that nature but the storm will be impacting northern Georgia I think tomorrow so the game is on Sunday just just for reference for a local reference those rainfall totals unbelievable 8 to 12 inches of rain maybe even more than that for the Tennessee Valley for the the southern Appalachians that region the the North Carolina mountains um, and then extending towards the south where where Helene will be making landfall again a lot of rain six to eight inches plus of rain so flooding going to be a big concern not only for the coastal spots but again across much of the southeast later today and tomorrow. So for New Orleans, our area, we're on the back side of this. We're seeing a lot of dry air. It has been windy today since we're on the back side of this, but you, you can see that sharp cutoff where the dry air is. It basically stops right on the border of South Mississippi and South Alabama. So no impacts for us in the New Orleans area. It is going to be breezy today. We'll continue to see that dry air, and this really illustrates that upper low that's in the mid Mississippi Valley that's going to be pushing Helene to the northeast. And you can see Helene on water vapor imagery there closing in on Florida. Florida already starting to see the outer bands and the tropical storm force winds because it is such a massive storm. Like we've been saying um, fr from the National Hurricane Center, the latest, the tropical storm force winds extend outward up to 345 miles from the center. So just an unreal situation setting up here. For the New Orleans area, we are going to be dry today. There's no rain happening at the moment. We do not expect any rain today. It's just 
it will be windy today. We've got that northerly wind bringing in the drier air. Sustained winds now up to 15 to 20 miles per hour, gusting above 20 miles per hour. So we could get those gusts today up to 30. But other than that, that's going to be it. We'll have, you know, elevated seas. We have a small craft advisory in effect until Friday morning across our local waters and the lakes and in the Gulf. And that's the extent of our impacts here at home. Here's our wind speed forecast for today. Again, northerly winds sustained 15 or so miles per hour, gusting 25 30 going into the afternoon and into the evening today. And then with the drier air coming our way, actually we'll be seeing lower dew points. It will feel kind of like fall heading into tomorrow and this weekend. Still going to be warm, but the mornings will feel much more refreshing and comfortable. With these lower dew points, we'll be less humid and we'll have some cooler mornings to look forward to here across our, our area. Elsewhere out in the tropics, of course, we've got powerful Helene expected to strengthen to a major category three, maybe close to a category four strength. We'll see at the time of landfall later today, this evening in Florida's Big Ben. No impacts for us, but elsewhere out in the tropics, actually Isaac has formed. So tropical storm Isaac is out in the northern Atlantic basin and it's headed east, so it's not coming to the United States, so we don't have to worry about that. There's also one other spot out there in Vest 98, and it looks like it will be staying out in the open ocean, but of course, we'll have all eyes on the tropics as we finish up the month of September and head into October. Tuesday is October 1st already. Here's our seven day forecast for Southeast Louisiana and South Mississippi. Nothing to worry about breezy today. Lots of sunshine over the next week. No rain temperatures every day in the mid 80s. Less humid today and tomorrow. It will pretty much stay comfortable heading into the weekend and through next week and check out those morning low temperatures down in the 60s. So getting that first kind of subtle taste of fall. Hopefully we'll see a real cold front coming our way soon across our area. So thanks for tuning in. We'll be back with much more, of course, for the WWL uh, news at noon. So thanks for tuning in.